ladies and gentlemen. Your title beat me to it. We are going to write quadratic functions <clears throat> and models today. All right, so let me give you your objectives. Hopefully the lighting is a little bit better. I switched to a different room. All right, so our objectives are going to be um, to write a quadratic equation given a couple of different situations. Given a graph and or or given some data points. So that is our primary focus for today. We will write an equation given either the graph or some data points. All right, before we get started, I would like you to remember just the different forms for our quadratic equations. A standard form is y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. All right, so that's our standard form. The next one that we learned was our vertex form. And that one is y is equal to a times x minus h quantity squared plus k. That one's perfect for graphing. And then if you'll remember our next form that was called intercept form some books call it factored form. And that one is y is equal to a. Notice that the same a is in every equation. And then x minus p and x minus q. All right, so that is the information that we had for our graphs. All right, so let's just start with an example. So in this particular problem, you're going to be given a graph. So here's my graph. It's lovely. I'm going to have a vertex of 1, negative 2. And I'm going to have an additional point, we'll call it P, an additional point who has coordinates of 3, 2. And that's all I know. And I want to be able to write the equation. So typically, you're going to start either in vertex form or factored form, depending on the way they give you the information. And then I would write the equation and then go from there. You cannot assume that A is equal to 1. So most of the time, we will have to find A first. All right, so let's start by writing our equation in vertex form, since I know the vertex. And I'm going to write y is equal to a, I don't know what a is, I'm going to have x minus 1 quantity squared minus 2, substituting the vertex into my equation. Now what I'm going to do is substitute in the additional point for the x and the y value so that I can solve for a. So if I substitute in the y, I would get 2 is equal to, there's my a, my x is 3 minus 1 quantity squared minus 2. I'm going to add 2, and then I'm going to have a times 3 minus 1 is 2 squared. So I get 4 is equal to 4a. So a is equal to 4 divided by 4, which is 1. Just so happens that this one turned out that way. It's kind of a coincidence. You can't assume that a is always going to equal 1. So then I can write my final equation in vertex form as y is equal to x minus 1 quantity squared minus 2 because I found that a was equal to 1. And so that is the equation for my first problem. All right, let me scoop this up a little bit. Let's do another example. This time I'm going to be given a slightly different parabola. This one's turned upside down. Okay. 
This time I'm going to know my x-intercepts. This one is 4. This one is <coughs> a negative 1, sorry. And this point is 3, 2. This point is not the vertex. It will be labeled as the vertex or be in a vertex position if it's actually vertex. But this one is just an additional point. I can't start in vertex form because I know the two x-intercepts. So I'm actually going to start in intercept form. So if I write down my generic equation, because you can't see it now, and x minus q. All right, I'm going to substitute in what I know. So I know that y is equal to a. I have an x plus 1, and I have an x minus 4. Remember the signs inside the parentheses are always the opposite when we're talking about our x's. Now I'm going to substitute in my point for the y and the x's because I need to solve for a. So when I do that, I'm going to get a 2 is equal to, there's the a, and then I have 3 plus 1, and then I have 3 minus 4. So if I simplify that math, here's the a, 3 plus 1 is 4, and 3 minus 4 is a negative 1. So now I have a 2 is equal to a negative 4a, divide both sides by a negative 4, and then I'm going to get that a is equal to a negative 2 over 4, which is the same thing as a negative 1 half. Alright, so now I can write my equation. I'll write it kind of over here on the side, and it's going to be y is equal to a negative 1 half, and then I'm going to leave it in factored form because they didn't tell me I had to do anything differently. And then x minus 4 and that would be the equation for that particular parabola. Alrighty, let's move on and do another example. Very short lecture today, which is nice. Alright, so here's your next example. Alright, this one says write the equation. Oops, write the equation of the quadratic, and this time it wants it in standard form. So you always want to make sure that you pay close attention to the directions and whether you can leave it in vertex or factored form, or if you need to convert it to standard form. So this one specifically asks for standard form, so that's how we're going to redo our equation. Your given information is that the x-intercepts are going to be a negative 5 and a negative 1. And then I'm given an additional point, and I know that that point is a negative 7 and a negative 24. So the procedure for this particular problem is going to be to write our equation. So I'm just going to write down our steps. I'm going to write it in intercept form. Sometimes I say factored form because different books call it different things. Then I'm going to find A, and then I'm going to expand so that I can put it in standard form. All right, so let's start with what we know. I know that Y is equal to A. I'm going to have X plus 7, and then I'm going to have X plus 24. Oops, sorry, my bad. That's my extra point. Let me restart. I know that y is equal to a times x plus 5 and x plus 1. Now we're on the right track. Then I can substitute in my negative 24 and my negative 7. So I'm going to substitute those in for y and x. So if I substitute in the negative 24 is equal to, there's my a, a negative 7 plus 5 and a negative 7 plus 1. I'm going to simplify a little bit. There's my a. A negative 7 and a positive 5 is a negative 2. And a negative 7 and a positive 1 is a negative 6. This simplifies to be 12a. So now I can divide both sides by 12, divide by 12, and I get a is equal to a negative 24 over 12 which is a negative 2, which tells me that my parabola is turned upside down. 
All right, so now I have enough information to start my equation. I'll just kind of start over here. I have y is equal to a negative 2, and then I write my factors, x plus 5 and x plus 1. So now I need to expand my statement because it specifically asked for it to be in standard form. So I'm going to do my little box. I'm going to do that for the x plus 5 and the x plus 1. And I'm going to get x squared, x, 5x, and 5. And that simplifies to be x squared plus 6x plus 5. Now I'm going to distribute the negative 2. So y is equal to a negative 2. And here is what I found when I expanded. And then if I do that math, then I'm going to get a negative 2x squared minus 12x minus 10. Remember, I'm multiplying that by every term on the inside. I'm distributing it equally. So then my final equation would be a negative 2x squared minus 12x minus 10. Remember that anytime you're asked to write an equation, you always have to say either y equals or f of x equals to get full credit for your problem. Alrighty, that's all of your new information. Very nice, very short and sweet. Let me give you your three problems. Yes, you only have three, you lucky dogs. Alright, here are your three problems. I want you to write a quadratic function. I want you to write it in standard form. Okay, and you're going to be given information, which is a little vague. So I want you to write the quadratic function in standard form with the following given information. So number one, my paper keeps getting stuck, you're going to have a vertex of 4, negative 5, and it's going to pass through a point. I'll call it P. It's going to pass through the point to negative 1. So that's your first problem. There's your vertex and the point that it passes through. And remember, I want the equation in standard form. So when you're done, you have to expand to get it your equation in standard form. Your second problem, the vertex is going to be a negative 3, positive 1, and it's going to pass through the point 0, negative 8. So that's kind of nice. All right, last problem. Only three problems today. Your x-intercepts are going to be x is equal to a negative 2 and 5, and it's going to pass through your point that has coordinates of 6, 2. So there are your three problems for the evening. I'm glad you had a short lecture, and I will see you tomorrow.